Well, hi there, everyone. Welcome to another Cardwell's Cauldron here on Geektopia Island. I'm Cardwell. And I'm Kevin. And of course, the whole set is rotated and it's all good and fun. Hey! And we got new magics out. We got new magics, so that means we're going to test out all the new creature cards and fun stuff for sure. But before we do that, go ahead and remind you that we do have a Patreon. It only takes a dollar to support us and send us some love, and we love you very much for it. Now, I went ahead... I kind of find this to be an actual serious deck. Usually I just throw a bunch of weird, fun, silly stuff out, but I kind of want to build this for real, for standard. But it's called A Hero's Journey. It's a Golgari mix, and I always love making just dudes that do stuff that kill stuff for Golgari. Like, that's my favorite type of thing. What? You're making a deck that has kill in it? Yeah. All weird. the kill. Like, there's, it's just dudes and kill, and it should be fun. I think it should be pretty good so far. I've been playing it on Arena, actually, since Arena can, you know, let you play a week early, so it's been fun. But let's get into it, shall we? The first one, of course, is Birds of Par- Oh, I mean, Gilded Goose. It's a one-drop, zero-two flyer. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create a food token, which is a new thing in this set. It's an artifact that say, uh, pay two, tap the artifact, and you gain three life. You sack it. And the bird also has, pay one and a two and tap the bird, you get a food token. Or... You can tap, sacrifice the food, add one mana of any color. So they realize Birds of Paradise is way too powerful, so they kind of made stipulations to it, but it can get there for sure. Yeah, this is still technically a Birds of Paradise, just a little worse. Yeah, yeah. But next up is Knight of the Ebon Legion. He's a black for a 1-2 Vampire Knight. He is from M20. Uh, he's a black and 2. You, you can pay that, and Knight of the Ebon Legion gets plus 3, plus 3, and gains Death Touch. At the beginning of your end step, if a player lost four or more life in this turn, put a one one counter on him. This guy is just super solid, and he can outrace people real quick if you need to. Yeah, he gets stronger every time you deal lots and lots of damage. Yeah, yeah. Which hopefully that's what you'll be doing for sure. <clears throat> now, this guy will probably be in every green deck I ever make, but it's a Wildborn Preserver. It's a one and a two, a two two flash, and it has reach as well. Uh, whenever another non-human creature enters a battlefield under your control, you may pay X. Where if you do put X 1-1 one -one counters on while born preserver. This guy is pretty silly and insane. He can get up there really quick. And if you notice, it says enter the battlefield. So you can have tokens come into play without paying mana cost and still pay X and swing for it. So it's really yeah, good. Yeah, he's pretty silly. Yeah, he's really good for 2 mana. Next up is a Murderous Rider. Course, and right? it is one of the adventure cards, so essentially it's two different cards in one. Yep. Uh, but it's only that in your hand, and I'll explain that in a second. But he's, he's a murderous rider, it's a zombie knight, so he's a 2-3 lifelink. When he dies, you put him on the bottom of the owner's library. Yep. Or, if he's in your hand, you can play him as swift end as an instant, an adventure, so two black and one. Destroy target creature or planeswalker, you lose two life. Then you exile this card, and you may cast the creature side later from it. So it's like, it's Hero's Downfall, and if you're playing black, you're going to have four of these all the time, no matter what. Yeah, because it's a kill spell that turns into a dude later that you always get back. Yeah. So, I mean, it, there's really no downside to using this dude, and it's three mana. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to do anything. And it has lifelink. It helps get you back that two life that you lost, if it matters in the long run. He's yeah. extremely solid. Like, this guy is going to be dominating standard for sure. Yeah. For the longest time. And the reason the adventure is so good is because, like you said, you can kill one side or you can play him quickly to get life against, like, an aggro deck. Yeah. So you can just forego the kill spells to just be like, I have a 2-3 lifelinker. Cool. Great. And there's really not much in black now that kills Planeswalkers except for this card. Vraska's yeah. Contempt is gone, which makes me super sad, so we're playing this for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The next one is Savvy Hunter. It's a 1 black and green for a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, when it attacks or blocks, create a food token. I think this guy is extremely good. Mm -hmm. like, just ex solid body for the cost. And it has an extra thing of sacrifice two foods, draw a card. Yeah, thanks. Like, guild a goose and you attack once and you draw a card and it helps you just keep recycling for sure. Yep. Next up is uh, one of the final bosses that you go on your hero's journey. Oh, yes. The questing beast. Or it can be a partner. I don't know how you want to do it. Yeah. But it's two green and two for a 4-4. Four, four. With Vigilance, Death Touch, and Haste. Because because why not? Yeah, why not? Uh, when it can't be blocked ex by creatures with power two or less. Okay. Combat damage that will be dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. Yeah. 
And then whenever he deals combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to the target planeswalker that player controls as well. So it has everything. Yeah. You just get to kill whatever you want, yeah. however you want, easily. And I've noticed that there's not really not many people are playing really big creatures because this guy just immediately swings in and punches a dude and punches to fairy and punches any other planeswalker in the face as they're doing damage. It's completely insane. This card's super good. It, yeah, it it's, has death touch and vigilance, so you yeah. can just be like, I can swing the turn I play it, and still have a blocker with it to kill whatever you want. Exactly. Whatever needs to happen. It's disgusting. Like, it's actually. extremely, like, that's why it's legendary, but it's gonna die and you're gonna be killing dudes, and it's just, it's the main reason why I wanted to build a deck like this, because yeah. it's just a solid four drop. Insane. And another uh, little enemy you have to go on your journey is Wicked Wolf. Two and two green, it uh, enters the battlefield, it's a 3-3, three, three. enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Now, I don't know how many times I've been blasted by this card on Arena, and it's just so good. Because, when you sacrifice a food, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Wicked Wolf, it gains indestructible until the turn, tap it. The fact that it gains indestructible is what yeah, makes it's it kind of disgusting. just really, really good. So even if you do Gilded Goose, and then turn four, you play this guy, you can kill a four drop without losing a guy. And then by that turn, you might actually have more food tokens that just keep making it a threat. And there's not, yeah. He's pretty silly. He's pretty, really, really, really good. Next up is the Clackbitch Troll. Two black and three for a eight, eight trample with haste. Yeah. When he enters the battlefield, target opponent creates three zero one white goat creature tokens. Don't care. At the beginning of combat of your turn, your opponent may sacrifice a creature. If a player does, tap him, you gain three life, and you draw a card. So sure, it gives them a way out of taking damage from him, but you gain extra card advantage and extra life total. Yes. So it's kind of worth it in the in regard just because it gives you extra value. Sure, it's three turns of this dude not moving, but... That's nine life that you could potentially be drawing. It's three more cards and... Yeah. Even if they sack those three goats, you still get the ability to be like, I have an 8-8 Vigilant, or an 8-8 Trample Haste, so... Some point, this dude's gonna hit, or just be a threat for you forever. Yeah, if he didn't have haste, I wouldn't use him. But he's an 8-8 with haste and trample. So that, that means immediately they have to do something about him. If they kill him, sure, they have little blockers, but all your dudes, some of them have trample, and you're just gonna kill them anyway. I'd, I really enjoy this guy, for sure. Yeah, he's pretty silly. Now, of course, we go into the spells here, and it's classic Assassin's Trophy. Another way to get rid of Planeswalkers and enchantments and stuff. So it's a black-green instant. Destroy target opponent, opponent controls. The controller may search their library for a basic land card and put it in the battlefield and shuffle to the library. It ramps him, but when you just need to kill a Teferi or a Conclave Tribunal or whatever, you, it just needs to happen. Yeah. Next up is Find and Finality. It's one of the split cards. And find is either a black and a green, or black and a green. So you can do any number yeah. of those, but it's two mana. Sorcery, return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Good. So double raise dead, pretty neat. Yeah. And then finality, a black, green, and four for a sorcery, you may put two on counters on a creature you control, then all creatures get minus four, minus four. That's awesome. Yeah. So you're killing the board, which minus four, minus four kills pretty much everything you need it to right now. And this allows you to save your questing beast and kill theirs. Yeah, exactly. Or if you're like next turn troll before combat, you do finality, kills all the goats and stuff, and you're still swinging for six. <laughs> like, thank you. Because it puts two counters on it and it's just yeah, ridiculous. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Now I have one of these because I have a filler card and not sure what to do, but it can be removed immediately, but it's Legion's End. One in a black sorcery. Exile target creature and opponent controls with converting mana cost two or less, and all other creatures that player controls with the same name as that creature. Then that player reveals their hand and exiles all the cards in the name with their hand in the graveyard. So this also gets rid of the goats too. If you're just like, next turn, exile all goats, swing in, or sack your major dude that you care about. I don't know. It seems like a great kill card for now, and you get to look at their hand. So that's really good. It's pretty good. And next up is Obnixilus' Cruelty. It is a black and two for an instant. Target creature gets minus five, minus five. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. Yeah. 
It's just super good. It's super strong because you're just like kill that dude. It's minus five, minus five. So it gets around any kind of counters or any of that stuff. Indestructible. Like, any stroke, indestructible. It's just like, oh, that dude zeroed out. He dies. Yeah. Good luck. And I feel like we're not sure about the meta right now, but I feel like five is the perfect number that kills pretty much everything that everyone's going to use. So I think that would be perfect. Yeah. Now, of course, that is the deck and it's just basic 24 lands. So we got four overgrown tombs and four temples. And because the buddy lands are gone, it makes me super sad and makes this deck kind of slower, which makes me, you know, sad as well, like I just said. But, and then just forests and swamps. Uh, at the moment, we don't have on roll mentions that we usually do because I'm not sure what's going to happen. But of course, with black, you just put in discard for control. Yeah, that's what you just really need to do. Besides that, all these creatures are solid in their own right by themselves. Uh, every of them can do a great top deck, and uh, most and you get a bunch of kill to just to swing in and go for it. And you can draw, uh, start drawing some cards as well with yeah. good old savvy hunters. So. Yeah, this deck is pretty silly because it just it just gets there, man. It's a good solid all around card, and you get food tokens to help you out with uh, aggro decks for sure. But with that, hopefully you enjoyed your stay here at Geektopia Island, and the deck will will be down below. And I hope you have a good day. Goodbye. Later. Also, guys, I just remind y'all to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and if you want to keep up to date on all the future content, make sure you click that bell. It'll give you all the notifications you need. With that, we'd like to go ahead and give a big thank you to all our fans that support us through the year, and especially our Patreon support people. Uh, we do like to give a shout out to our Mythic and Above uh, supporters, and that would be Dwayne Higgs. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. We love you.